Come on, baby, still be there. I can't hear it, but I bet it's there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Seems to be over on that far side there. Well, I think I should put the freaking camera on. Let's see what happens. I see you're recording, but let me get mine going. Because I'd like to catch a nugget on this bad boy. That's what I got it for, right? That's it. Well, good morning, boys and girls. Out here on the freaking uh, hunt again. I got a target right down here, right down in that hole there. So I figured I'd fire you up. See if I might get fortunate enough to dig me something good out of here. See if I can get this thing set up here in a good spot. So I don't throw rocks on it. <laughs> I should have brought my chest pack. Why don't you put it up on the bench up there? It looks good. That's what I'll do. I'll put it I'll put you all up on the bench. See if you can talk one out of the ground. Not Just sweet talk it out of the ground. See if I can't sweet talk it. Look at that Give little shiny. Talk. There's a nice piece of shiny right there, baby. Oh, yeah. That's a nice piece of gold. Look at that. Can you believe how tiny that son of a bitch is with that coil? Yeah. And how deep it was? Well, you still haven't lost your touch. I haven't lost my touch, and I knew that yesterday. Looks like these are from an alien. They're crazy. Crazy stuff there, Kimasabi. There might be a target there, but I gotta wait till you get out of the way to find out. Yeah, let me move my uh, beautiful ass. I don't know if I'm quite picking it up. Or... Still in there? Yeah, it's up there. Right under that flat rock. Probably gonna be a nugget. I hope it is. Come on, gold. Nope, I saw it. What is it? Fucking 22 slug. Really? Not a slug, but a shell casing. Targetto. 22 long. Yeah, here we go. Dirty fucker. Just trash man today. Day ain't over. Fucking trash man. I'm lead man. Get the lead out. That's what I've been doing. And now my battery was just giving me the tone. You got an extra one? Yeah. Always, always have an extra one. All right, we're going to repair the nugget finder coil cover that came off. Being a prick. We're going to do the quickie bush fix. This is like the most horribly designed coil cover you've ever seen. Yeah, Guaranteed to fall off in a day or two. People at Nugget Finder ought to be for this stupid stick-on crap with electrical tape. Dumbest idea in the world. Friction fit. They got a perfect lip right here on the coil. Perfect lip right there. Friction fit. Do you get the message, Nugget Finder? Friction fit the coil. Yeah. 
This isn't that hard, guys. Ain't rocket science. Hire us, we'll design a better coil cover and coil. And I don't even charge you $100,000 to do it. You can hire me for $50,000 a year <laughs> and I'll design better coil covers. This is what's called bush medicine for your coil when your coil cover falls off. American know how duct tape. Red green would be proud. As long as it ain't got metal in it. Check it before you stick it. <laughs> yeah, this morning for breakfast, we're going to have the exact same thing we've had the last two days. We're going to cook up some onions, then we're going to eat an avocado. We're going to have a can of wild sardines, and in the can of sardines, we will put some of this uh, awesome stone ground organic mustard. Breakfast of champions. Now well, here we have a. Uh leg looks like a deer leg i'm guessing uh mountain lion buddy had something to eat not seeing any other pieces of him Alrighty, i've got a the ground reject switch on my bug is getting pretty darn loose and i'm getting concerned with that so i'm going to take my leatherman and Give it a quick inspection. I haven't done this in a while, so hopefully my memory serves me correctly on the process here. Hey, I might need that little washer later, but it shouldn't be a big deal to open this up and take a look and see what's happening in here. Yep, so you can see we definitely have some some looseness there. And this happens when you actually use these things. Parts will loosen up over time. So I was able to get this in a lot better place. As you can see I got it on this fleece here. Nowhere near as loose as it was. It's feeling pretty darn good. I think it's going to be okay for the rest of the trip. It'll be good for another week. So, life is good. I just took the uh, edge of the file of my Leatherman. There's two opposing nuts on this rheostat, I guess you'd call it. This control knob. And I just used it with a little bit of pressure to tighten them up. Feels good. Should work fine. I've done a lot of repairs on this control box over the years is I've needed to. Sometimes fixing the same thing multiple times and usually if you just take five, think about it, you can get through it. You can see you it. get back to the finding the gold. Got the gold bug here. And there's a nugget down here, a little piece of gold. You can just see it shining up. I haven't got it out of the crack yet. Slowly working them out. Oh, that's going to be a nice one, too. Look at that. Oh, it's bigger, way bigger than I thought. That's, uh, that's a surprise. Look at that. That's a nice piece. There we go. Look at that. If you're wondering why my hands are so yellow, it's because uh, I spilled some turmeric. my hand yellow during the cleanup so that's the way it is but that's a nice nugget that is a really nice nugget this is actually the first target of the day and it's a piece of gold and uh, i've had this weird thing where if i see a red cardinal i don't find gold 
but I broke that curse today. I saw a red cardinal this morning and I found gold. The curse of the red cardinal is done. Look at this. We got a, we got a scorpion buddy here. Look at him. Where's he going? I bet he knows where there's some gold. I'm far from being a any kind of a flower expert. It's sure pretty though. There's a couple more of these down here. A gorgeous day. Absolutely beautiful out. Well, there's a couple more of these flowers across the way. Very nice. Might have missed you on that one. Did you, you got it down in the choked up stuff, right? I'm still in the choked up stuff. Well, good luck, brother. There could be anything in there. I 10 four. I agree. I'm a taker slow and hope I get another target and it's the right color. All I know is we must have been living right that Thanksgiving because I didn't find any trash. All I dug was gold that day. That's hilarious. That was the best Thanksgiving ever. Oh, and, uh, to, uh, you think we're going to get darker, and it's actually pretty darn chilly out. You know, I don't have much body fat. <laughs> pretty thin guy, um, but I'm pretty tall, so a lot of area to lose heat quickly. But I'm doing good. My shirt's a little wet, and my back is where uh, my backpack hits it. So I just pulled my uh, Mylar space blanket out and uh, hiking with it, kind of like a cape. It's working out pretty good. Dennis is coming along behind me. I probably should have brought a, uh, uh, you know, a windbreaker or something like he did with him. But I didn't. But I do have this, and uh, I'm glad I keep it in my backpack. Yeah, now we're back with the quad. I'm good. I'm all warmed up. I've got a dry shirt on. I've got a jacket on. I've got two more jackets. Feeling good. My lair blanket did the job. It's saved my hide more times than Colonel Colt's equalizer. <laughs> Looks like a little BB. Yep, it's a little bird shot. That's all that one was. But it's one, one target into the day. Keep going. I'm gonna share some thoughts on these BOF machines like this Gold Bug 2 and the Gold Monster. You often see in advertising and on the forums, you know, when you hear people's opinion, you have to have like the most expensive detector out there to find gold. None of that, absolutely none of that is true. I've owned a lot of different detectors. And hopefully this wind doesn't cut into the volume too bad. Oh, it's getting pretty windy. We'll see what happens. But anyway, so I've had everything from Tesoro Lobo back in the 90s, GMT, um, gold bug, gold monster, SD2100, GP Extreme, GP3500, GPZ7000. I've used a lot of different machines and they're all capable. They're all capable. And I'm not saying anything negative about the way things are advertised. What I'm saying is don't be discouraged if you can't afford the most expensive machine. A machine like this 
you get one used four or five hundred bucks maybe I don't know it will find plenty and plenty of gold for you so be confident if this is all you have this is all you can afford be confident so fun and capability these little machines will do it for you Somebody came through here in a Rokon. Only see one track, so definitely not a quad. Probably a hunter. Black sand. Must be gold in this here creek.
Hmm. Look right there. Looks like a uh, young cat print. Here, yeah, kitty, kitty.
Right, battery check, battery's still good. We've got a ways to go. Not too worried about gold today, honestly. I've been hunting gold all week and got some of my poke. More than I'll probably claim. I'm enjoying this. But I do have the right equipment with me. Just in case I change my mind. That was a slippery rock there. Woo! Good time to practice fall recovery. This is a little deep here. A little quick sandy. Maybe we can get through it. Doesn't seem like a big deal. Yep, not at all. Some more prints in here. Coyote maybe? Dog? I don't know. Ooh, that one was deep. It's a good thing I had waterproof boots. Put a leather boots on.
Look at the uh, swirl fell out of the alluvium footing it had up there. Imagine how heavy that thing is. Check in with uh, Brother Dennis here. How you doing, bro? Okay, is the radio working at this uh, social distance? How you doing? One full tab and one bullet that got me excited. Oh, them bullets are sweet, aren't they? What a beautiful day. It's been a good week for gold, and uh, even though I'm carrying a detector and a pick, it feels good to just hike. I've had enough gold in my life, I don't have anything to prove, and I will continue to find a lot more. That uh, cactus got a little excited there. Now, some years ago, up here, ways there was a a dredge. Someone just threw up on the bank, and it sat there for years and years and years. Kind of a waste of a perfectly good dredge. But, you know, people leave equipment places and hopefully the individual who left it there is okay, didn't get hurt, didn't come back to it. All over this country I found equipment stashed, power cords, six packs of beer, saws, buckets, dry washers. You name it, I probably found it at some point. Oh boy. Cattle buddies up there. That, that boogie in. I'm not going to hurt you. I'll wait for your for sale. Grass fed, organic, free range beef. 
on sale at my local market. That's a pretty view right there, look at that. Pretty view. Coloration in here of the minerals is great. And absolutely beautiful. Especially the alluvium here. Ain't the first time I've been in this creek. Probably won't be the last. I threw here before. Like an old claim marker up on the hill there. A bunch of no see -ums in this area. Although I see them, they're no see -ums. Yep, that looks like an old claim marker. Doesn't mean there's an active claim here. People put up claim markers and drop the claim and never take them down. It happens all the time. But you can always check before you prospect. Well, contrary to some opinions out there, that are 100% incorrect, if someone has a mining claim, you are 1,000% free to hike through it, do any legal activity that would be happening on BLM land otherwise. The, the claimant has the right to extract minerals. And if you extract their minerals, there's no law called claim jumping. It's called mineral trespass. And you can get in big trouble for mineral trespass. But hiking through an area that might be claimed, not a problem. Not a problem at all. And I'm speaking strictly about patented claims, because patented claim would mean the person owns the mineral rights and the land. And if they say no trespassing on their land, probably smart to heed that. Oh, cow dookie, you left me a little treat. You're like, oop, you give you a poop, buddy. Give you a little poopy. Oh, what a gorgeous day. I'm feeling great. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah, that's the old claim marker, no doubt. Not sure if you can see it with a better view over here. And you'll see them in my ear. I'm going to check the battery real quick. See how much more is left on the GoPro. Might be running out. Yeah, it's getting there. About a third of a battery left, maybe. Maybe a quarter. Kind of hard to see it's on my shoulder. I put the camera forward a little bit extra so it doesn't turn into beard cam. I can only think of a few people who really want to see my beard. And if you didn't know, you will find up to 69% more gold if you have a beard. It's the way it works. The gold gods respect it.
some nice bends in here. You can see across the way, there's what's left of a structure. Nice some old prospectors. A little old cabin there. And back in the day, and prospected this out. The prospectors were pretty smart people. more little structures back here. The creek looks a little quicksandy up there. So I think I'll cross here. There we go. That was easy. Not actual quicksand, just enough to sink your boot. How pretty is this? Look at this. Beautiful. Good looking ground too. for sure. Oh, that was a tripper there. That was a tripper. I must have two right feet. See some cattle's up on the hill. You can see their horns, or I don't know if the camera will actually pick it up, but I can see them right up there. Some cow buddies. Future steak. and keyed the mic, accidentally keyed the mic. Good looking mineralization in here, that's for sure. Little bug buddy. That was a, quite a thud when those boulders came down. Be interesting if you were camped nearby. Maybe you would think it was thunder on a sunny day. Glad I missed that event. As far as being under them, I would like to have been at a safe distance and filmed it, but stuff's rolling all the way across the creek here when it falls.
looks like more cat track. Yep, more cat track. Must be a kitty cat up here somewhere. Here, kitty. Nice kitty. Nice kitty. There's some cattles up there, hiding out in the bushes, halfway up the hill. Or if something comes down at them, they can run down the hill. If something comes up at them, they have an egress up the hill. Pretty smart critters, and they taste good. Interesting bug action here on the cliff. A little stuff is falling out. I think I'll stop here and change the battery out on the camera. Seems like a good plan to me. Back in business filming again. Took about a 10 minute break. I had to change the battery in the uh, GoPro. And then the strap came off my backpack. And I have a really nice backpack. I have an herbal stock or herbally stock, or I don't know how you say it. Doesn't really matter. Sandalwood, tan, whatever the hell you people call it. But anyway, so it's a great backpack. I love everything about it except the straps tend to fall off real easy. And it's just the way they're engineered. It's an effective way in case something breaks, you could easily replace it, but at the same time, you got to be mindful of it. And uh, then the GoPro, um, this little backpack mount I have for it, where the plastic meets the head of the screw, and you have to thread it in, it actually kind of just popped out. So I got my good old Leatherman out and fixed that up and got everything back where it needs to be, and we're good to go. Take a look up there, you can see there's a Pretty good widow maker up there against that cactus. Eventually, one or the other or both are gonna probably come down. Alrighty, journey continues. I don't know how far up I'm gonna go, but we'll see. Havelina track. Must be what the lion was following. A lot easier to hunt a javelina than a cow. Those big lions do hunt cattle. Isn't that a great sound? Listen to that. Beautiful.
beautiful. Look at this. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Well, definitely some nice heavies in here. What do we have up here? Like a loop system. Oh, shelves up there. Amazing. Now here's some track. Right there. A little critter. Nice big boulder. Beautiful country. A little bit of a fall here. See how soft all this is. Some water seeping out of the bottom. Beautiful, beautiful. Beautiful country. Yeah, it's, you know, probably around uh, four o'clock. Beautiful out. I keep saying it's beautiful out. I mean it too. So there. How do you like me now? Sun's gonna peek behind that hill pretty quick. In a mile and a half, mile and three quarter, maybe get back to the quad, something like that. Got my headlamp, I'm in no hurry. I know Brother Man's feeling a little beat up. He hasn't been out in a while, so. 
He's kind of taking it easy, staying near the machines. And that's good. We haven't went anywhere too strenuous, and that's exactly how I would want it too if uh, I hadn't been out in a while. You know, but I'm out all the time and hiking up and down hills, creeks, piece of cake. You gotta take good care of your friends, they'll take good care of you. So I had a, some places I wanted to go explore and they'll be there. We've had such a good time hanging out on this trip, I've missed them so much. But life gets busy. You make time for, for your friends, it's always time to explore later. Exploration is my uh, prospecting mantra. And when uh, you're helping a friend, that's what you're doing. That's the main thing in life. Be there for each other. Always another day, another way, another hill, another piece of gold. Your friends are your real gold. You got to treat them right. Be there for them, respect their limits. If I hadn't been out prospecting in a long time, months, maybe a year, you know, I might not uh, be in that greatest shape to want to do a big hike either. But fortunately, I get out all the time, so. It's not where I'm at, but that's where he's at, and that's what's important, is taking care of him. He's one heck of an outdoorsman and one heck of a prospector. One of the best I've ever seen. Much respect to my brother man, Dennis. All right, I think we'll turn around. Let's see what it looks like this way. You want to see what it looks like this way? Why this battery last a good long time? You will. Different view. Different view. Hello, cattle. Be good with some mustard or barbecue sauce. Don't know about ketchup. I like it. It's not really my thing, though. Hiking is one of my favorite activities right next to prospecting and other indoor sports. But we did a lot of good hiking and prospecting and last summer up in Colorado, up there about a month. It was absolutely great. Up in some wonderful mining country. My buddy, my other really close and great friend, Laz, he, uh, we prospected along this one river, then he uh, later got into this other area. And that was a couple weeks later after, uh, you know, the trips were going different ways and we had different agendas at that point. We'd spent a good two weeks together and he wanted to go somewhere and we needed to get somewhere and he got some really good gold and uh, up in Colorado. So I'm looking forward to checking that out because he told me where it is and I want to see it. Another great friend and super outdoorsman Lies. My good buddy Lies. Between the three of us, Dennis, Laz, and I, I think we've I lost count of the pounds of gold we found, but man, we sure had fun doing it. And there's always more to be had it's about having a good time. And I think a lot of times people have a, you know, expectation of themselves that's unrealistic. I do whatever I feel like doing. I feel like going for a hike today and carrying my equipment. It's exactly what I did. Recently, I ran into a, a guy I haven't seen in seven or eight years. Um, won't get into his name. He's got a YouTube channel. He posts on the gold forms and stuff. And I uh, know him pretty well. Got him over his first nugget. Got him over his first half ouncer. And uh, back then I was had a really strong YouTube channel and website and stuff. And, you know, it feels good to see someone else um, making their way their own way. And it's good that you can help somebody do that first learning or whatever it might be. So they can go on from there and do whatever. So more power to everybody.
had so many friends and prospecting and outdooring and hunting. I love to hunt. <coughs> yeah, just inhaled a bug. Pretty tasty. That's a, that's a really nice swirl, too. And I like that one. Don't know why. It's pointing that way. Hmm. Heard people say the Spanish came in here and bent the arms of the Suaros all throughout the Southwest. Point where the treasure is, and uh, I have a hard time buying that. The Suaro arms won't always stay bent, they're not reliable. I've seen chains tied around them to indicate something from, you know, back when someone came through. And that can actually lead you to quite a bit of gold. People would tie chains on them and mark something, mark a trail. I've even seen a trail along a uh, mineralized dike that somebody went in and they uh, just somehow chopped the cactus all along the dike. They were all chopped down. And, uh, you know, you, you generally in nature see cactus fall over, fall in half or whatever. But this, you could tell, was deliberate. They marked it and maybe they were worried about finding their way back and there maybe it was way more than I saw, but you could tell they were. Uh, that was purposeful. Nature doesn't just cap a bunch of uh, swarrows across a pretty good distance where dikes going. But I just have a hard time buying that. Now I'm sitting here. I should have brought a tent. I was actually thinking about that. Yeah. Me and the brother man could have camped right up on the shore and enjoyed this. I don't need to go back to our rigs. Alrighty, let's keep going. Man, it's so nice up here. Get back, make a campfire. Get a different path through here maybe this time. Slightly different. Sure, I trust that rock right there. Inside bend, all this schist. But there's a little piece of gold in that one. Whoa, that was a muddy sucker right there. That was a, uh, that was a wrong step. I am thankful for waterproof boots. Feel the wind coming? Feels good. Generally, I, uh, when I'm going up or down a very steep waterfall, I don't carry my pick. Going up this one is no big deal. I had three points of contact. Going down is a little, eh, I'd just rather play it safe and throw it over there. You can always pick it back up.
One of the cracks in this bedrock here. This is a, a dredge dream. A dredge dream, if there's gold. Like I said, I found a dredge on this creek many years ago, and I'm sure that a lot of these spots have been dredged pretty darn good. Isn't a prospector worth their salt? Who'd hike a dredge in here and not do all they can, unless they got hurt or some unexpected, unforeseen circumstance prevented them from coming back. But if that wasn't the case, they're not worth their salt. Let's see how we want to do this one. It's like Monty Python needs someone banging coconuts together for me as I cross the creek. There we go. Listen to that churn. That just didn't flow all the time. Come summertime, this is going to be bone dry. Ah, here's some pretty flowers. Check those out. Some buggy wuggies flying around in there. A lot of trigs in this country to hunt. That's for another day. Another slippy slip. I've never understood how people can wear shoes out and hike on even ground like this. I don't get it. I see hikers and joggers out and They have these little ankle shoes. And I need something, an 8 or 10 inch high boot to uh, prevent me from turning my ankle. Worn boots all my life. Turned ankles are no fun.
I mean, I have worn tennis shoes and sandals and barefoot. And I like boots the best. You turned your ankle out here. It's not going to be any fun getting back. At least you have a story to tell. That's an interesting little trip. Might be some gold in it. You can always find out at a later time because that's not what I'm doing today. But don't overlook trips. I mean, that's that's awesome. You can find a virgin patch in there. It's not my mission today. Do my part and pick up some litter. Some kind of old pop top can thing. Five here. Make the bottom snap on my snake chaps. That's come undone. So I want to fix that. I really like these snake chaps. Probably my favorite pair, and I've owned a lot of them. It's a bear. Just a minute. Nope. There we go. All fixed. The only thing I didn't like about these snake chaps is the uh, buttons trying to use the GPZ 7000 when I had that thing. I had to hear every single movement I made. So I actually had to put some on. Uh, I, had to, I have another pair of snake chaps that don't have any metal in them. For detecting with a BLF like this, yeah. I don't even have to worry about it. even smaller coils on a PI. I've used these with an SDC 2300. When I had one of those, it didn't have any problems. When you get into uh, the bigger, more powerful machines with the bigger coils, and you have them set, set very sensitive, you have to watch what's on your feet. Even these boots, these are leather boots with metal pieces in them. 
I have my no metal boots back at camp. And uh, if I was using a PI, that's what I would be wearing with a... Uh, I'd probably wear these unless it was a Z and I don't have a Z. But uh, you can always turn these around backwards and put the uh, snaps in the back. So let's pick up our stuff and continue down the dusty trail. Actually, it's not dusty, is it? I get it all can piece. There it is. All right. I just consumed another bug. When I had a rather flowery taste. Speaking of flowers, isn't that beautiful? Wow. Gorgeous, gorgeous. go to the left of the boulder to the right of the boulder I'll go to the right A little slick. A little hop, skip, and a jump, you get right over it. Another good trip to hunt right there, right near that old rock structure. Might even be an old dig up there somewhere. Prospector could have been getting, digging stuff out down there and getting stuff down here, or maybe a whole rancher had it there. I don't know.
Ooh, cattle left me some more poopies. Cow puckies. The cattle weren't sinking in too bad down here, so hopefully I don't either. It's a lot better on this side, though. Well, that's where I came before. Thought so. Hey, 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 how you doing? Oh, he's probably digging a target or out of range. Wasp fly in my beard. No, no, Mr. Wasp. Go away. beautiful place.
There's no CMs in here. I don't see them, but I feel them. Yeah, there we go. Little track. All kinds of critters out in beautiful country like this. Sometimes the critters are with people, sometimes they're not. The lion track there. Not too old either. I've seen a lot of people who've never been to the Southwest just really scared of mountain lions. There's some places in the states that they will attack you. California might. Cousin shared stories with me. Pretty sure it was my cousin. Maybe he shared the story about rattlesnakes. Either way, something. My cousin lives up in, uh, in his family up in Northern California. He's also a prospector and Harley rider. Great family, great folks. It's funny. I have never worried about mountain lions. I've never had any problems with them. None at all. Absolutely zero. I've seen two. One of them was up on a hill like this. The other one was on my quad. Going after something. A lot of times I wish I had a camera. I've smelled them. I've seen a lot of tracks. But, I mean, just as far as close encounters go, from here to there. It's the only two. When I was up in Alaska, it was interesting. I read a lot of books before we went up there and did some prospecting. And uh, learned that more people are killed by moose in Alaska than they are by uh, bears, especially grizzlies. Very interesting to learn. And uh, you know, we were up in the Yukon, up around uh, Chicken, Eagle, over towards Dawson, Jack Wade Flat, some other areas too. And I saw a guy's uh, camper in the back of his three-quarter ton truck or whatever he had, maybe it was a one ton, but you can see a bear just took to it and just clawed the crap out of the side of it. And big claw marks all over it. That kind of thing happens. I don't know why the bear would do that, but we were hiking back quite a ways, hiked uh, all through that country and never had any problems with bears or moose or anything. We are actually walking down a, a creek <clears throat> with quite a bit of gold and there were berries, blueberries and everything growing everywhere and thought for sure we'd see some but never saw them and my uh, wife used to live in Alaska in fact she used to work for Ketchikan Airlines and uh, she spent a lot of time up there and you know, she said just whistle as you walk through you know, scare them off and uh, we did some whistling and it seemed to work, we didn't whistle up a bear or moose you can see them up there pretty easily, just for viewing, but we didn't have any negative encounters with them. I think the critter that gave us the most trouble in Alaska was reindeer. We're driving our Jeep over by Toke, between Toke and Chicken, I think it was. I got it on film. It was, you know, you could see herds of caribou off in the distance, and this reindeer just would not get out of the way of the Jeep. I was like, dude, get out of the way. He just stayed right in the road for miles. Then we had to respect him and just stay behind him. It's cool to film. He's one stubborn old reindeer, though. I 
do enjoy hiking just as much as I enjoy prospecting. I really do. Because they both go so well together. I think one of the reasons I've been a successful prospector is I like to explore it. And uh, what I suggest you do right now is put your fingers in your ears. Where, you know, if you're listening, put your fingers in your ears. Just trust me. Alrighty. If you didn't put your fingers in your ears, you know what just happened. Good thing there's a wind. All kinds of little cabins like the one you saw back there hidden off in these bushes. Remains of them here and there. It's like a juniper there. We even found graves out hiking. Old graves. Navigate this a little bit. A couple different ways to approach it. I think I'll go this way this time. Probably the smarter bet. Unless I want to go a little bit beyond my boots' capability to withstand water, which I don't. Other than having a great time, I do not have anything to report. How about you? You got a copy?
I just turned it back on and off, see if that works. Got a copy? Yeah, I got a copy. What do you got? I got a great time, that's what I got. How about you? I'm down here digging the shit out of shit. Well, there is that, isn't there? Looks like this sucker flows pretty good. But so far, all I'm getting garbage. How about you? I'm just uh, exploring more than anything, seeing how things look. You know, I've been up here before. You and I have like way the heck up here in this, but uh, just taking a look around, see what uh, I may want to do a little different tomorrow, the next day, whatever. So just kind of where I'm at, kind of enjoying uh, hiking, seeing stuff. There's, you know, as you know, there's bedrock for, for miles in here. Just absolutely beautiful. Oops, got my cam piece. Pack that out. I don't know if you responded or not. If you did, I didn't hear it. There's some real nice gold where that alluvium meets that bedrock right there. For a guy or gal who wants to dig. Today I'm not a digger. I'm just enjoying my hike. i plenty of digging this week. You just go get out and stretch the legs. It's all good exercise. It's all good. You got a copy now? Yeah, I got you now. Ah, uh, you know, you and I have hiked up here before and there's bedrock miles up. You and I have been way miles up on this thing. And uh, today I'm just kind of enjoying. Uh, I just decided to take her a little bit easy and uh, hike and film some stuff and just enjoy the hell out of it. Mm. Hey, you're coming and going. I still don't know that you... I don't know if you can hear me or not. I You got a copy now? These radios aren't working so great at the moment. Usually do. Oh well.
A bit more trash here. What do we have? I have no idea, but it's looks like packaged garbage. I shouldn't say packaged garbage. Well, I, I eat packaged food too. Sardines, they're packaged goodness, not packaged garbage. But by the looks of this, yuck. Alrighty. Take someone's crap here. Can't pick it all up, but I'll grab what I can. As I go along, I've gotten everything I've seen. There you go, this one's for my wife. There's another stick em up cactus. Good old stick em up cactus. Stick em up. Alrighty, back at it. Back to the row contracts. A great looking trip.
They put a lock up there. Oh yeah, nice bedrock in here. Good gold potential. Oh yeah. Not a volcanic, that doesn't mean anything. Gold is often where you do not expect it to be. The books aren't always right. Hmm. I think we'll end the video here. Thanks for joining me.